You may or may not have heard the term neonatal encephalopathy. You're on the Hope for HIE socials, so you are hearing encephalopathy, but associated with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. HIE is under the umbrella of neonatal encephalopathy, and it is a term for a complex state of a newborn baby's brain in which neurological function is disturbed, um, and that can include an altered level of consciousness, seizures, poor tone, and inability to initiate or maintain respiration, and it has many different causes or etiologies. So um, it's really important. Uh, we feel very strongly that families um, should have an understanding in their own uh, path of health literacy and understanding of their child's diagnoses and child's medical history of what the cause of their child's neonatal encephalopathy is. Uh, so we hope that this is helpful and we're going to go into the most common causes um, and there are resources and support for each of them. You can find them at neonatalencephalopathy.com, which we are hosting um, as a courtesy to hopefully help more families get access to support and information that they need. Also to say that because it's neurological and nothing seems to be cut and dry in the neurological realm, you can have co-occurring conditions. So we're going to go over the common causes, but just note that some of these can co-occur. So number one and fun, where the number one cause of neonatal encephalopathy is HIE, we're about half. So 50% of all neonatal encephalopathy is HIE. Um, other causes, and you can see the percentages as we go down here, um, infection, metabolic, genetic, stroke, IVH, congenital malformation. And we're going to get into a little bit of each of those in just a moment. All right, so HIE, who we are. Um, it's the most common type, and it has a distinct pathophysiology. So we know that there is a uh, cascade of events that happens with HIE in this process, and there are many roads that can lead to HIE. And so these are just some of the more common causes. We have more on our website and in our other videos if you want to dig deeper in another video or another time. The second most common cause of neonatal encephalopathy are maternal and perinatal infections. You've probably heard of group B strep, neonatal sepsis. You might have heard of CMV. Um, all of these different uh, maternal and perinatal infections, there's more we just listed the top causes of viruses and bacteria that can lead to this. And some of these have long lasting um, impacts and potential for those. Um, and some do not and are transient. The next one we're going to focus on are metabolic disorders. Um, and these uh, many times can be, if they're identified early, they're specific um, treatments that can be used to correct these um, like inborn errors of metabolism, mitochondrial disorders. Um, MOCD type A is another one that can present like because it's under the umbrella of neonatal, neonatal encephalopathy. So a lot of times um, it get might get misdiagnosed uh, initially. Um, but these are really important because there's specific treatments um, that once they're identified can be given, resolved, and have no long-term impacts. Genetics. We are in the genetic revolution. So we have really great genetic testing now in high income countries and various genetic issues and disorders can be figured out way quicker than ever before, which is really helpful for our community. Um, in particular, you know, sometimes getting misdiagnosed initially as HIE when it's something else, or it could be co-occurring. Um, but these are the most common genetic issues that can lead to um, uh, neonatal encephalopathy. Neonatal stroke. Yes, babies can have strokes. They can have them in utero. They can have them during the birth process. They can have them into childhood. There's all sorts of different ways you can have a stroke. It's a localized type of brain injury. So with, um, think of it more as a vascular injury. Um, HIE, there's another thing that is causing the lack of blood supply. So like a cord compression or a placental issue or something like that. Strokes um, are caused by a vascular either malformation or blood clot or something in the brain. So it's more of a localized um, event. Again, it can lead to um, or co-occur with HIE, but it is its own standalone as well. So just that they're not one and the same, they are definitely two different um, diagnoses. All right, IVH, intraventricular hemorrhage, or um, brain bleeds in babies. And these are most common with preemies. Um, it's re they're graded on a scale typically of one to four. Um, and you would know if you if they talk about hemorrhage and you know brain bleeds and things like that, they're typically talking about um, IVH. 
Lastly, congenital brain malformations. There's a ton of them, um, but these are the most common. Um, and for these babies in particular, they may present similar to HIE. And then when they do the MRI, they're like, oop, nope, that was actually because of the brain malformation, not because of HIE. Um, and so, you know, what's really important about all of this information is that um, when there's more information known, that families are updated and educated on what that means for their child. Going back to this to wrap up, hope this has been helpful. Um, it is a lot of times very complicated because babies that present with all of these issues can show very, very sick. And so they're trying to do the right interventions to stabilize them. Um, they may put them into cooling um, on the hunch that it's HIE. Most times by days five to seven, they have all of this kind of figured out of what is, um, you know, teased out to be non-genetic or, you know, something that some, again, these can be co-occurring, but they have um, a better idea of if something, especially for more moderate to severe HIE, um, if it is, uh, you know, identified as that specific diagnosis. So we hope this helps. We want everyone to make sure that they um, have the best understanding they can. This is very complex stuff. Um, if you've never been, you know, exposed to the medical system before in medical jargon and terminology, it can be very overwhelming. It's like learning a whole new language. Um, and again, we want to make sure that people feel confident and can advocate for their children, advocate for their families, understand what they need, um, and can make the best decisions based off of the information that they have.